A stark warning from Germany's health minister. He says there will be no swift end to the coronavirus pandemic. As a result, Germany is introducing new measures for dealing with the virus long term, including more testing and stocking up on additional flu vaccines to prevent a wave of double infections in the fall. The latest figures from the Robert Koch Institute provided the clearest picture yet as to how the epidemic has developed in Germany. The calculations show when and how many people became infected and when key steps were taken to slow the virus spread. The ban on public gatherings took a while to make a noticeable difference. The closing of schools brought infections down considerably. German Health Minister Jens Spahn says the number of registered acute infections in Germany has been falling for over two weeks and is currently at 37,000. But regional differences remain, so the government announced that testing will be stepped up even further from nearly half a million tests last week. We will introduce more regular testing in care homes, including for asymptomatic patients. We're also changing some of the rules for tests to get a better overview of the epidemic. And we're introducing compulsory reporting of negative test results. Work on an anti-COVID-19 vaccine in Germany has meanwhile taken a step forward. Mainz-based company BioNTech says a first group of 12 participants had received a trial vaccine on Wednesday. But with the progress of infections still unpredictable across Europe, Germany's foreign ministry has decided to extend its global travel ban until mid-June. Foreign Minister Heiko Maas said that Europe needed to find a coordinated approach. Over the last four weeks, we brought 240,000 tourists from all over the world back to Germany. We will not carry out such an operation again this summer, which is why a lot will depend on how we get on with fighting the pandemic here and in other countries. Protesters and pressure groups, meanwhile, are urging the German government to ease even more of the current restrictions. On Thursday, the state premiers of Germany's 16 states will reassess the situation with Chancellor Angela Merkel. Let's get more now from our political correspondent, Thomas Sparrow. Thomas, what can we expect then from Chancellor Merkel's talks with Germany's state premiers later today? Terry, this will be mostly a discussion on the measures that were already taken a few weeks ago as a sort of interim balance, if you will, where the regional leaders and Angela Merkel will take stock on what was decided and what progress has been made. There could be decisions, for example, in the reopening of museums or the conditions that have to be met for religious gatherings to take place or also, for example, something particularly interesting, what will happen with German football, the Bundesliga. But it is not expected that there will be very big announcements. Those big announcements, if there are any big announcements, would be expected in the meeting that will take place next week. So again, this is mostly a sort of interim balance of the measures that were already taken a few weeks ago. OK, a lot of focus on opening schools, of course. If we could just bring back up that graph we had in our report, it shows new infections in Germany initially rising and only seemed to start falling once this country's schools were shut. Of course, lots of other things were happening at that time too, but it's been decided that the schools will start to reopen next week, Thomas. Is that not a risky move from a public health perspective? It is a risky move and, in fact, uh, a group of leading German virologists just this week published a report in which they said that children could be as infectious as adults and they cautioned against an unlimited reopening of schools in the present situation. So it does explain why the situation of reopening schools is such a complex and difficult one. And it also explains, Terry, why authorities decided to give schools some time to prepare in order for children and pupils to go back to school with the necessary health measures, with the necessary hygiene measures, with the necessary social distancing measures. But it is a very difficult and a very tricky situation how exactly to have that gradual reopening of schools. Let's talk about the vaccine trial that's begun here in Germany. Twelve people have now received doses of a vaccine candidate. Does this mean that development of a viable vaccine could go faster than the 12 to 18 months we've been hearing about? 
German health experts have said that this could certainly take that time. And in fact, Germany is not the only country that is having these clinical trials. We've seen that in other countries as well, although there are development projects for a vaccine in many different parts around the world. But health uh, experts have indeed indicated that it could take that time. It is not something that is going to happen very quick indeed. Thomas, thank you very much. Uh, DW's political correspondent, Thomas Sparrow. Here's a roundup of some of the latest developments in the pandemic. South Korea says it has recorded no new domestic cases for the first uh, time in two months. The Korea Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reported four new cases, all of them imported. Japan is expected to extend its state of emergency by a, about one month for the entire country. It's currently scheduled to expire on May 6th. South Africa has seen its largest single-day jump in cases, with the total surging past the 5,000 mark. And the health ministry in Guinea-Bissau says Prime Minister Nuno Gomez Nabiem has tested positive for COVID-19. The West African country has so far recorded 205 cases and one death.